You've got a question? The place to go. AnnexWealth.com. Look for the Ask button. And again, as always, if we can help, click that Get Started button. Sarah Kyle's a wealth manager at Annex Wealth Management. She is back. Hello. Hello, Danny. Matt Moore is the investment team manager and a CFP at Annex Wealth Management. Hey, Danny. Uh, let's see. Our first one, in fact, everybody's anonymous, and that's fine. By the way, I didn't mention that. If when you submit your question, don't want us to use your name on the air, that's just fine. You will be anonymous, like everybody. First one is, when it comes to catch-up contributions, is there a difference between a 401k and an IRA? Which should I concentrate on? Yeah, well, the, one of the main differences is the amount of catch-up you can use. So for 2023, the 401k catch-up is $7,500, and the IRA catch-up is 1000 And you can do the catch-up if you're over 50 years old. But I generally suggest maxing out your employer plan first because of that pre-tax benefit, and then I would consider the IRA second. Next one on Ask Annex Anonymous. A Kiplinger story said, quote, value investing is back. Is it? Yeah, actually, I found, went out and found that article. It was pretty interesting. They tend to be a little bit simplistic in terms of how they lay a lot of that out, but it was still informational. First of all, it really depends on how you define value and growth. And they actually did a pretty good job of highlighting some of the differences that each index provider creates their own metrics to make that decision. Russell turns out to be the, the most basic of the two. They really just have one variable that, that makes that difference. Some of them are a little bit more complex than up to who's ever deciding that or works on that index. In face Meta, um, you know, previously Facebook, at one point was value and growth. You tend to sometimes see the same name on both sides. So it is a little bit hard. From a market perspective, though, really the last year or so, value has beat out growth, which is very different than what it has been since the financial crisis. An era that was dominated with low interest rates really helped growth companies out because you had to pay less and less to take that risk in terms of waiting for those profits to come in. Now that interest rates are higher, it changes the math on the valuation of a lot of these companies and value has done a lot better than growth has. However, that does change and sometimes pretty quickly. For instance, this first quarter of this year, growth is up 10% and value is up five defined by some of the ETFs that they used in the article. So it can change very quickly. And don't value stocks tend to do better in rising interest rate environments? They do. Value companies, again, sometimes loosely defined, are generally going to be more profitable. They're less dependent on taking out more and more debt in order to fuel that future growth. And they tend to be older companies. So a lot of times you're getting dividends and that free cash flow paid back. What I would really concentrate on, though, as an investor, one is balance between the two within a portfolio. And the second is looking at quality companies, companies that you believe are valued at a great spot, regardless if it's because they're a growth or a value company, but how much are you paying for that company itself? Next on Ask Annex, we've never gotten something like this. Have you ever done a financial plan for just one person in a married couple? Believe it or not, we have. Really? Yeah, everybody's situation is different, and clients come to us for different reasons. But since we do deliver that unique, customized planning, we do accommodate that request. Next up, why is China still considered to be an EM? That's emerging market? It is. Yeah, that's a really good question. And again, almost like the value and growth, it's really in the eye of the beholder. I did a little research to try to figure out who makes that decision and how that comes down. Sometimes from a market perspective, again, it goes back to the index provider in terms of what countries they're going to include in their emerging or the developing indexes. Also like regulatory bodies, the IMF, they have a calculation that they make. Turns out it basically comes to a sum of what's the GDP, their population, share of world trade, a share of world debt amongst others. And then they rank all the countries by those numbers. And then basically the top 20 or so they consider to be developed versus EM. The World Trade Organization, on the other hand, lets the country basically decide from themselves. But at least that's what I found on their website that seems a little iffy to me, but that's their decision. However, other countries can challenge that. So I think politically, that's really where that comes down to. And every so often you'll hear from politicians about trying to take advantage of the World Trade Organization and other countries. But ultimately, I, you know, it becomes uh, I the beholder. Yeah, and you wouldn't think of it as China being the second largest economy in the world. You wouldn't think of it as an emerging market. No, no, it, not from that standpoint, for sure. But if you also think of like their population base, yeah. there's so much more rule that, you know, it's not necessarily as developed from uh, across the board from the highest to the low as a lot of other countries. Final question. Does Annex review my 401k along with the rest of my assets, even if it's outside my plan? Absolutely. As Matt knows, we put that request in frequently. If you have an employer plan outside of your assets here, we will ask you for your available options in that plan. And then I would submit that to the investment team and they would put a allocation suggestion together based on your risk tolerance. 
Yeah, it is something our team does fairly often. Every single day, for sure, we get requests mm-hmm. like that, and we put together those allocations, again, based on the available options and the, the risk tolerance that that client has. Other things to think about, too, is that our 401k team here in Annex, we do that on behalf of all the plans that we work with as well, too. So our team will help craft the plans that we make available for those other companies, and then we'll actually manage that in terms of automation for those people as well, too. Matt Moore is the investment team manager. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah Kyle, Wealth Manager at Annex Wealth Management. Thank you. You're welcome, Danny. Thank you.